Tara Oakland. This is a reader's course on the Thoth, Toth, Thoth, Toth. There are 175,000 ways to pronounce it. We're going with Thoth. Personal preference. Beautiful deck. My absolute favorite deck. If you watch the channel, you'll definitely know that. So this is not a comprehensive course to where I'm going to go over everything. There are millions of YouTube videos that already cover this path. So I will link below in the description many people who have done one hour, two hours per card, if you'd like to watch that. But we're not going to do that. We're going to go for a reading method to where we look at some symbolism. We're going to look at the tree of life. And then we're going to go over the meanings of the card and we're going to use it in a reading. So it's basically a course to get you reading as fast as possible with this beautiful beautiful deck. So the first card we have, as with every tarot, is going to be the Fool. Now on the Tree of Life, we have the path of scintillating intelligence. Easy to remember. Hey Google, what's the definition of scintillating? Here's the definition of scintillating, sparkling or shining brightly. And indeed, the fool is sparkling and shining brightly. He's taking that leap, as you see here, with that leap on every tarot deck. We have the great leap and we have the companion. And he has the companion and the leap as well. You see his feet are definitely not firmly planted on the ground, but instead sort of just jumping up. He is definitely having a good time. You can see it on his face. Now we do have a sun over his genitals, which represents the creative side. And we have this inner spiral going all around and the spiral contains all sorts of things from a dove to a butterfly, etc. And it's going into his heart. In addition, he has the grapes and the grapes represent the sweetness or bliss of that new adventure, sort of going out on your own, stepping out into the unknown. Definitely sweetness and definitely some bliss associated with that, and you can see it in his face. Now, he also has a bag of astrology coins, and the astrology coins have all the different symbols in them, and he's taking them along with himself as he goes. So what does the fool represent? New beginnings. Right? Every tarot deck will tell you new beginnings, jumping out, leaping into the unknown, and also we have a childhood innocence. And you see this here, right? Have this childhood innocence, and this applies to the fool. You can see it on his face. He's having fun. Lots of other symbolism around here. He has his companion, and he's going on to the new beginnings. Childlike innocence, new beginning. So how would we use this in a reading? So someone is looking for a new job, they have an opportunity, but they're not really sure about it. We pull the fool. It's definitely time to take a bit of a leap in this ride, right? It's time to get that childhood innocence, maybe have a new beginning, the new job. So what if the fool is upside down? Maybe instead of doing the creative side, maybe instead of having that new beginning, we have an issue with just being trapped, trapped into the same old, same old. Everything is not going how it should. Maybe we're a bit too reckless also. Instead of being trapped, maybe you're going on the opposite end of being a little bit reckless. You didn't really research that job too well. You're kind of going in a bit, you know, on the risky side, but you may want to research that a little further type thing. So. We have two extremes on the reversed. One is not really doing that big adventure, not really taking chances, being a little trapped within yourself, trapped within doubts or fears or something like that. And the other end of the spectrum is a bit too much on the reckless side, feet too much in the air. Maybe you need to plant them a bit more. Maybe you need to get a little bit more stability in what you're doing. So that is the fool. And the next card is the Magus or the Magician. Now, there are several versions of this card within the deck. So this is the version that I have, the most popular version. Uh, you can get alternate decks with alternate Magus cards. So this is definitely one of the best cards in the deck. Very cool card. Um, 
he is a master of the tools. He has all the skills that he needs. He has that balance between heaven and earth. He has all of that stuff. On the tree of life, he is located here under the intelligence of transparency. And this is very important because you can kind of see that in his face and you can kind of see that in the design of the card as well. So he is juggling eight different objects, always, always, always the same four elements that you have inside of the tarot and then more objects as well. He also has the winged sandals of Hermes and he represents communication as well. So as astrology and tarot course shows you, the Magus is always about communication, about communicating clearly. And you can see this with the lines of communication, sort of like radio signals, just branching out everywhere. And these are communicating with different things, communicating with cards up here, communicating with cards over here. So an easy way to remember the communication is just all of these branches going out and going out for communicating with the different other cards that are around him because he is about the communication and obviously Hermes is Mercury and all about the messages and bringing messages along and things like that so with the tools and with this communication you have all the skills that you need you don't need any more skills to make yourself a success or to make things happen you have everything that you need a lot of us hold back because we think we need that one more thing, kind of like at work, you need that one more certification, or you need that one more thing, or you're going out on a date, you need to do one more thing before everything's perfect. And that chase for perfection that we always have, the magician reminds us, we really have everything that we need, we have all of the tools in, at our disposal, and we are, getting all the tools mastered. We have all of this stuff taken care of, and this is gonna be something that is always, always ready for us to use. In addition, it encourages us to open the lines of communication, go with the lines of the communication, and communicate clearly with other people, and don't be, you know, a bit haphazard with the communication. Let people know what you need, let people know what's expected, let people know, you know, that you like them, that everything's going well, and just keep the lines of communication open. So if we have a reversed magus, what does that mean? Well, we have the lines of communication are a bit closed, right? So if we have a reading to where we're starting that new adventure, we may have some issues because we have the line of communications closed. Now, upside down, we could use that com communication to our advantage and to others' disadvantage, right? We could be a bit of a trickster, could be using manipulative communication and maybe a bit out of touch with reality as well. So we're taking that leap of faith, we're getting that job that we've always wanted or whatever, we're, we're going out into the unknown and we're not quite prepared for that because we don't have reality on our side. We're doing it a bit, a bit haphazardly without a lot of research because we have this upside down, maybe out of touch with reality, maybe a bit of a trickster, maybe the lines of communication, poor communication, the lines of communication are closed. So we need to be wary when we see these in combination to make sure that we have the open communication, we're doing what we have, and we don't have a lot of self-doubt when we go into this new adventure. So that is the two cards, first two cards, the Fool and the Magus. And now we have the Priestess. On the Tree of Life, we're looking at unifying intelligence, the ability to unify, right? So if you look at the actual card, we have the throne. So the throne represents the stability, represents the rock hard stability that you're gonna to need to go forward, the stability that you're gonna to need to do what you need to do and to find what you need to find because the priestess is all about the inner self, finding your inner self. Behind the big veil, very obvious, very easy to see the veil, 
it's sort of the abyss that she sits behind. You're going to need to go to the other side of the veil to understand the priestess. And we have the two pillars, as with all, representing the force and the receptive side. So the priestess sits between those in this fine balance. Again, the veil is going to be obvious thing. The throne is going to be an obvious piece in here, as well as all the flowers that we have below her. So she is all about finding, again, that inner self, being able to communicate with your inner self. A lot of times we don't listen to our intuition, or we think that we're going to outsmart our intuition and just, you know, force it, go forward and not have that balance between the, the forcing and the receptive side of ourselves. So it's about finding that intuition, finding ourself, opening the lines of communication with ourselves in order to get the intuition that we need to go forward in life. Because if you don't have that intuition, a lot of times you're just going to get taken advantage of or you're not going to understand everything that you need to understand. Maybe you need to release a little bit of that materialistic side and go with a lot of the intuition. So obviously the priest priestess upside down is going to be ignoring that intuition thinking all right I know it all I think I have this I don't really need to listen to my inner self I'm just gonna go for it I think I need I think I have you know prepared enough or whatever and I don't really need to talk to my intuition anymore and ignoring your intuition is obviously never a good sign could also mean being a little more materialistic than you need to be why do you need to collect this much stuff uh, you know type things uh, you don't need to prioritize things maybe you need to prioritize yourself or that's in your communication with yourself or getting to know yourself or going on that walk or that challenge of moving forward with getting to know yourself a lot of times we don't do that we get busy with stuff we get busy with life and we never really take time just to relax and sort of focus inward and the priestess definitely reminds us to do this so what if we have that new journey what if we have this new experience the new journey taking a step into the unknown going with our inner child and then leaping into this, this could indicate we need to use our intuition during that journey. Again, we have that leap. We have the feet off the ground. We're going into the unknown. We're going to need to use our intuition during that process. So these two cards together are a great combination because, yes, you can go into the unknown. Yes, you can make that just esoteric leap into wherever you want to go. But you're going to have to use that unifying intelligence, the ability to unify between your intuition and yourself, or be able to unify between all the feelings that you have, between the little, you know, trying to force it and then trying to be receptive, that balance that we need to find. So we could go on the leap, we're going to have to use our intuition. Now a lot of times we don't use our intuition. So we don't use our intuition and we're sort of blocking that communication. So you can see the communication. You remember the lines of the communication. We have these lines of the communication and he is, has the Hermes wings with the communication, the messages and things like this, but we're not using the communication intuitively. We don't have that set up. So we're not doing that intuitive communication that we need. So if someone says, hey, I'm trying to read tarot, I'm not having a good luck with it. This is definitely something to where you, you've lost your intuitive side. You need to get back to it. You need to restore that intuitive side to get going full speed. And you're going to have to fix your communication as well. So we have two issues that need to be solved in this particular example. And the next card we have is the Empress on the Tree of Life. We're looking at luminous intelligence. Hey Google, what does luminous mean? Here's the definition of luminous, full of or shedding light, bright or shining, especially in the dark. Bright, shining, definitely represents the Empress, the fertility, nurturing, motherly card of the 
Tarot. Everyone knows this card. Everyone loves this card. And the Empress is between these two moons here. You'll notice this moon and this moon representing fertility and love um, has the pelican feeding its young, representing, again, the fertility, the love, the motherly aspect <clears throat> that we all have within us, right? To be nurturing the ability to care for others, etc. So a lot of us go into the fields associated with this to where we are caregivers or a nurturing field where nurturing is important. And that is going to be true with the Empress. And the Empress, again, is all about the fertility, the birth, uh, a new birth, uh, nurturing, taking care of your young, taking care of other people, making sure the people are, are okay, and being, you know, overly generically cool with people, not being just a bad person. So the Empress is all about that. And you can see that within the card. Such a nice flowing card, such a, a fantastic card. And always remember the pelican feeding the young with that nurturing aspect. And you can see the luminous moon shine around the moon sort of going out and touching each other and coming right in between the uh, and sort of coming in between here. So the luminous, you can see from that, and it's easy to remember the tree of life, luminous intelligence of <clears throat> the two moons. So if the empress is upside down, that means we maybe we've lost a bit of that nurturing aspect. Maybe we are a bit too focused on ourselves, or we're a bit too focused on things and we're not taking care or we're not finding that nurturing side of us or we're not being kind or we're not being gentle to others and we're a bit on the um, manipulation side. So you could have everything affecting this. We could have manipulation affecting this, making this card upside down. So we're using that nurturing aspect. We've lost it, not only that, but we're going towards a negative place to where we're going to use our influence to manipulate. We're going to use people's trust badly to manipulate. So we could be looking at that. You could also have a bit too much as far as vanity. So we're a bit too focused on ourselves again. We're not nurturing others. We're not nurturing people. We're not being that that sort of motherly aspect of ourselves because we're too focused on ourselves. We're too focused on vanity. How do we look? How do we fit in the situation? Me, 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 right? A bit of that vanity is interrupting this um, this type of thing here. So it could be uh, something to where you're going on that new adventure, but you're you haven't really you you haven't really found that balance that you need, and that new adventure is going to be corrupted by maybe manipulation, maybe a bit too focused on yourself. You don't have that luminous glow about you. You sort of lost that, and you need to get that back. That could be affecting the new adventure that you have as well. So maybe you don't have all the tools that you need. You're not finding that job that you want. You've been searching. You don't have all the tools that you need. You're going to have to get some other things in order to do that. And it could be caused by maybe the vanity or maybe the manipulation. So you're a bit too manipulative. You're not going to be able to do that communication. You remember the lines of communication. You're not going to be able to do the communication because you're too focused on yourself. So the last thing about the upside down empress is an unwanted pregnancy. Maybe you have a pregnancy that wasn't planned. You didn't want it. This is something negative in your life. So this could lead to that as well, being upside down. And that is the empress. And the last card today is the Emperor. Very fiery card. Very powerful card as well. You look at the massive difference between other decks with the Emperor and then this deck with the Emperor. The Emperor is on target. He is definitely there. He is definitely in charge. And he is red, full of fire, and going full speed. The emperor does not mess around. So in the tree of life, the emperor is located here under natural 
intelligence. He's a natural. You see these guys, they're trying, they're trying, and they're trying, and they look like just a tryhard. Emperor, he doesn't go there. He's a natural. He's natural intelligence. And you can see that from, obviously, the crown on his head. That is the crown of Ares. Ares, again, does not mess around. Ares is full horns. Ares is full speed. Ares does not stop. Ares is in charge and large. That is just how the emperor rolls. Now, he is holding an orb sort of indicating the creativity and the leadership aspect as well. We have the Lamb of God and this shield receiving this light. The shield is receiving this light from above. So what does the emperor mean, especially this bold, definitely significantly prettier card than any other deck, in my opinion? Um, he means about success. Ares succeeds. Ares gets it done. Ares doesn't play around. He succeeds. And it's also about taking responsibility. A lot of times we just sort of try to get that responsibility and assign it to somebody else or delegate it out or just get rid of it, right? We don't want that responsibility. The emperor takes that responsibility. He's got the crown. He's got the tools. He's got the orb. He's got the support. He has everything that he needs in order to make that a success. And he knows it. Emperor does not mess around. He takes that responsibility. In addition, he is natural intelligence. He's a natural leader. You know, the people that try to lead, they have to read 50 books. They have to research. They have to do a hundred different things in order to get prepared. The emperor is a natural. He does it in his sleep. He has no problems whatsoever being a leader. Now, he's also an expert because he has learned from his previous mistakes. He's learned from leading. He knows what to do. He knows what not to do. There's no confusion here. There's no hesitation. There's no confusion. He gets it done because he's learned the lessons, he's learned from the mistakes, and he takes that responsibility and he uses his natural abilities as a leader. And people follow because he succeeds. So the emperor upside down is going to represent obviously all the opposite. Maybe you don't have the goals in life. Maybe you haven't succeeded. Maybe this is not the venture that you're looking for. This could be something as well to where you have the other end of the spectrum where you're just too dominant. You're, you're a tryhard. You're leading, but you're trying so hard that you're just killing yourself in the process. It, it could have mean on the other end of the spectrum as well that you don't have that ambition. You don't think you can succeed because you think something's wrong. You think something's wrong with you. You can't succeed. You don't take that red, fiery aspect of the emperor and go with it. You sit around, you think up too many things that are going to get in your way, and you just don't go for it. You don't have that ambition. You don't have those goals and maybe you have too many rules. If you lead, you have all these different rules and you're a bit over domineering. People are like, Ugh. you know, you have that intensity that's not really focused. You'll see that a lot of people have that intensity, that red intensity that's not focused. And they just sort of go round and round and round. And, and it, if they use that to their advantage, if they focus their efforts and they really could get things done, so if you're going on this new adventure and you're sort of going out there and you're just leaping with it and you have that childish ambition and you have that bliss and that sweetness and you have that path into your heart, but maybe you just don't have the goals in mind. You don't have, you don't have everything that you need as far as the succeeding, the taking the responsibility and this being upside down sort of indicates that, right? So if you do go on that new adventure and you have it upright, that is freaking fantastic. You have the leadership that you need to make this new adventure go great, right? You have that responsibility. You're going to have that success. You're a natural. Again, natural intelligence on the tree. You're a natural with it. You have that red, that have that fiery aspect. You have that Aries inside you and you're making it go. 
So as well here, maybe you have an important phone call. Maybe you need to be more assertive. Maybe you need to get that red fiery Aries aspect and put it in the lines of communication, right? You have all the tools that you need in order to get that done. You have the lines of communication. Maybe you need to be a bit more assertive. You're not really being assertive. You're not really applying for that raise or that promotion because you don't really think that you have all the tools, but this is telling you, you do have all the tools and you do have that ability to succeed. These are two great combos, right? What a great combo this would be for applying for a new job or applying for a raise or something like that. Perfect combination, one of the best combinations ever, right? Maybe you need to use that leadership, that domineering aspect and to nurture people with it. Maybe you need to focus on the nurturing aspect of that leadership. So you have the fiery red, you have the Aries, you have the leadership. Now it's time to nurture it. You have these two cards. It's time to nurture people with that, with that and use your power in order to make other people happy. Use your power in order to make, uh, give other people the, the ability to do stuff. Empower other people to succeed. You have this combination. It's time to nurture. It's time to get that guy at work that doesn't really think he can do it and delegate some easy stuff to him and let him see success. Let him see some success and give him praises and things like that. So you have that balance between the masculine and the feminine that you need to be using in that situation. So that is the end of the first cards in the series. I would like to thank my Patreon supporters, which literally... Uh, help paying for the software that I'm using to make this. They're literally making this possible. Janet Littler, Annie Lemaster, Ali Cat, La Ami, Richard Zeh, and Crystal McGinn. All of you are amazing. If you would like to join my Patreon and help support this channel, link in the description and as always please hit like and subscribe the more people that see the channel the more attention we get the more this is recommended by YouTube is always going to be something awesome because it gets more people excited it gets more people here to chat and hang out with and we can be a community together which can just do awesome things and and be you can have new friends, connections, everything is awesome. So thank you again so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.